All right, we're going to get fired up with news you can use this morning. There's two things that I want to talk about. The first one's an update to something we discussed last year. And this was the federal bailout of cities and counties for rent assistance. The government, I'm not sure how many billions of dollars, and I can't remember the name of the act, but uh, the government uh, passed a bill, Congress passed a bill last year and gave money to the cities and counties to send to people or to pay people's rent when they were behind uh, because of COVID. Uh, primarily, there was, a, there was a COVID nexus to the deal. In other words, you had to either say or actually have had COVID, and you had to be behind in your rent payments as a result of that. Um, it was distributed to a, essentially every county uh, in the United States. Yesterday, uh, the federal government, the Treasury Department, came in and seized a bunch of that money back from a number of counties in Texas. They did this in some other states too, but the article I'm reading is uh, from a Texas uh, uh, publication and talked about the fact that these five counties had not distributed the money quick enough. And so the federal government was taking the money back from the cities and counties in order to, uh, I guess, pay it directly to these people or on behalf of these people. So you've got some level of federal takeover of state functions here. The, the housing thing is clearly a, a state constitutional level function, not a federal, but uh, we're going to see what happens on that. So some of these counties uh, didn't have, in California, for example, we had no procedures, no protocols to hand out the money. So a lot of these counties just sat on the money um, while letting people, you know, not con continue to not pay their bills. Um, and so I will keep you guys updated as we get more updates on that. But uh, in conjunction with that, <clears throat> last week was the highest level of eviction filings in the United States in the last 15 years. Uh, so going back to all the way back to 2007, 8, uh, when we, we started the, the big or what they call the giant recession, the great recession of 2007, 8, 9, um, when there was a ton of evictions, this was the most we've had since then. And as a percentage, it was even a larger amount. So <clears throat> what's happened is we're finally allowing these state laws to lapse and the states are now going in and filing the eviction. Just last week in, in Houston, in Harris County, uh, there was over 2000 eviction notices filed. So you're gonna see a lot of landlords uh, potentially coming to you guys saying, I'd like to sell because they're, they're tired, they're, they're done. Uh, they've not been able to get paid and they're actually going through the eviction process. It's a good time to focus some of your marketing efforts on uh, holdover landlords who've had holdover tenants who have not gotten paid. I can tell you that their level of pain will be significantly higher than it normally would be because even though it looks like there is light at the end of the tunnel, once you start filing the eviction process, it still takes a long time to get the court to award you a judgment against the tenant who's not paying, and then it takes even more time to be able to evict them. So uh, lots of landlord pain out there, and there should be some really good opportunities for everybody. Uh, the, the next thing real quick that I want to talk about is Zillow's semi-annual listing of the top real estate markets in the U.S., um, they have listed the top five that they predict for this year. Now, you know, I would take this with a grain of salt because Zillow's had lots of bumps and scrapes in the last uh, six months or so. But here's what they're claiming. Now, keep in mind that National Association of Realtors has gone out and said, we talked about this in, I think, November, that Salt Lake City was going to be the number one market, Salt Lake and the surrounding areas. Here's what Zillow says, that the fifth best market in the U.S., Charlotte, North Carolina. It's the one to invest. Now, what they're basing this on is they're saying market appreciation. So not per se flips, not per se holding and getting rents. These are properties that they think you can buy cheaply. And if you hold on to them for a short period of time, you can have a lot of appreciation. Charlotte, North Carolina is number five. Uh, number four, San Antonio, Texas. Last year, the number one market in the United States was Austin, Texas. Uh, so now the thinking is, okay, you go south of Austin, the next biggest city is, in fact, is San Antonio is actually bigger than Austin. Um, and there's there's more play there. San Antonio is a good market. Uh, I don't know if Ian's on here or not, but he's in, he's in San Antonio. I've bought and sold in San Antonio before. And it's a, it's a fairly low-priced market. 
um, it, it's one I would give some, some serious look to if you wanna position yourself in a certain market. Number three is Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, Brandy, uh, that's your neck of the woods, isn't it? For something close to that. Uh, Charlotte, Raleigh in that general area, Winston-Salem. Yep, all of it. Uh, Charlotte's about an hour and a half for me. Raleigh's about an hour and a half for me. And then I'm in the triad, which is in the middle of both of those. Nice. Well, they're calling that the third best market. Number two, Jacksonville, Florida. Second base, best place in the country to buy property and make money this year, according to Zillow. And number one, uh, you know what? Before I tell you what number one is, let's let's say, have everybody put in the chat if you want to take a guess. Uh, I'd like to see what everybody's guess is. What do you think the best market that Zillow is saying? Don't look it up. That'd be cheating. <laughs> So go ahead and put in there what you think is the, the best market, and then we will uh, we will talk about it here in a second, and I'll explain why they think it's the best market. Justin says Nashville. That's a good guess. Um, what else? Orlando is Brandy. Yeah, it's pretty close. Memphis, Michael Bean, uh, somewhere in Florida, Michelle Roberts. Any other guesses? Joe says, uh, Joe Doyle says Texas. All right. Give it another 10 seconds. Any other guesses? All right. You guys were you're close. You're close on all this stuff. Number one market in the U.S., according to Zillow this year, is the city of Tampa, Tampa, Florida. Um, and what they're saying is that they're forecasting a 14.3% increase in the average value of houses in Tampa. So in other words, something that would be worth, let's say $300,000 today or the 1st of January this year will be worth 340, 350 uh, by the time Christmas comes around again. And the reason they're saying this is, and it could go as high, the, the higher estimates are, it could go as high as 24.6%. So, you know, you potentially have a market where you could be in at 300,000 today and you could be at 375 by Christmas coming up. Not coming up, but into this year. Uh, the reason is uh, the employment is good, taxes are low, uh, big demand uh, to live in that general area. And there's a, a shortage of houses. There's just not enough houses in there. So uh, Sophia's like, Tom Brady, go. Yeah, unfortunately they lost, right? Or you know, fortunately my Rams beat them. So, so sorry. <laughs> But uh, Tampa, number one, that's what they're saying. So we've got, you know, the big ones weighing in right now are Salt Lake City and Tampa. Um, I'm going to do some, I'm going to be in Salt Lake in a couple of days and looking at some of those markets around there. And I will send you guys, uh, we'll do some video probably from there. And I'll, I'll record a video on how to look at some of these markets going forward. Um, there's some interesting things going on in some of these areas. They're kind of unhooked from the regular economy. Uh, it's, a, it's a bizarre deal, but uh, you may want to look at positioning some of your business in some of those kinds of markets. So more to come. Anyway, 